We can all understand how a man forgives offenses against himself. You tread on my toes, I forgive you. You steal my money, I forgive you. But what should we make of a man, himself unrobbed and untrodden upon, who announced that he forgave you for treading on other men's toes and stealing other men's money? Asinine fatuity is the kindest description we should give of his conduct. This is Lewis. A fourth possibility, almost too obvious to need mentioning, is that Jesus was honestly mistaken. Plenty of people are. C.S. Lewis, who should have known better, stopped. I know not how many of my publications you have read, Professor Dawkins, but I think you misconstrue the nature of this trilemma. Let's take another look and make sure we've left no stone unturned. Lewis, who's argued so well up till then, can't complete a syllogism. Poor guy. Are you sure about that? You never could quite do that. Tell me. No, you're chewing more than you bite off, my good chap. Please, call me Jack. That's precisely the problem with faith, believing in something for which there isn't any evidence. On the contrary, faith is the art of holding on to things your reason has once accepted in spite of your changing moods. Are you sure nobody's explained that to you already? There is no good reason to believe in God. But there we must come to the very existence of reason itself, and whether that may constitute what you call evidence. If science can't give you the answer, philosophy won't, and certainly not religion. Bless me, what do they teach them at these schools? 